Hello everyone and welcome to this latest uh, instalment in our series of Campsy Clergy Reflections. Nice to have you with us once again. Today the text is from the prophet Hosea uh, from the end of his book of prophecies. So let's hear this text together. Return Israel to the Lord your God. You have fallen down by your iniquity. Take with you words and return to the Lord and say to him, Take away all iniquity and receive good, and we will render the calves of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride horses any more. Neither will we say any more, The works of our hands are God's. For you are the one who has compassion on the orphan. So, uh, there, there's a fair bit that needs uh, a little bit of explaining and exposition in that text before we're in a position to understand it. We will not ride horses anymore. It's not that God has a problem with horses or people riding them. Uh, the sense of that phrase, we find it elsewhere in the Bible about riding horses, is the war horse. The horse is a symbol of uh, war, especially aggressive war and war of conquest, of human power, if you like, as opposed to the power relying on the power of God. So that's the sense of that little phrase, we will not ride upon horses. There is also an even more strange phrase that jumps out at us. We will render the calves of our lips. So what does that mean? Well, it relates to the a little word earlier in the prophecy. It says, take with you words and return to the Lord. So if we think about it, the whole of this uh, book, the book of Hosea, his ministry has been about bringing the word of God, the words of God to the people and encouraging them to respond to those words. And now what he's saying to the people is, now it's your turn. So God has spoken to you through Hosea's ministry. Now it's your turn to speak to God. Take with you words and return to the Lord. And those words, prompted by the words that God has spoken to you, those are the calves of your lips. So the calves, that means the, the calves, the bull calves that Israel had been asked to offer in sacrifice. So the idea is that the words that come forth from our lips in response to the words that God has spoken to us through his prophets and in the scriptures, that's the sacrifice that's acceptable to God. That's the offering that we make to him. But of course, it's easy for our words to be empty. And the prophets, Hosea and other prophets, are full of warnings against empty sacrifices. What I want is love, says God elsewhere in the prophets, not sacrifice. Knowledge of God, not offerings. And likewise with our words, our words can be empty if they are not prompted, if they don't come from the heart. If, they don't, if they're not prompted by God's words spoken to us. So what we're asked to do first is listen. Listen to God's word. Allow it to touch our hearts. Allow it to bring forth within us a desire for repentance and conversion. And then offer to God the calves of our lips, that acceptable sacrifice of words spoken from a humble and contrite heart. Let's pray. Let's offer God the sacrifice of our words this morning, words that are not empty, words that speak of what our hearts are full of. And we ask God to fill our hearts increasingly with his goodness and his love so that what we say to him in prayer 
may be acceptable in sacrifice as an offering to him. Let's ask God to increasingly touch our hearts that we may offer him the sacrifice acceptable to him. Our prayer, our love, our repentance, our conversion and our continual humble walk with him through each day of our lives. Amen.